when the force acts normal or perpendicular to the plane, we only develop normal stress of P over A considering this area. But what if the force acts on an inclined area with an angle of inclination of theta? Like what we have in this figure. So we have this. If you take this section, this is your P. And this is the stressed area. So we can break down the components of P. So this is normal to the area. This is your theta. Therefore, this is P cosine theta. And this one is parallel to the area or the Y component. This is your P sine theta. You have both X and Y component of P. Therefore, two stresses can be developed or can be experienced by the inclined plane. So here we have your shear stress. While here you have your normal stress. Okay, so given that we have stress equals P over A, but for inclined plane, your area is equal to area over cosine theta. Therefore, we have for the normal stress P cosine theta over the area A over cosine theta. We have the formula for the stress of P over A cosine squared theta. Well, for, so this is the formula for normal stress. Now, for shear stress, The effect of the shear stress is parallel to the area. Therefore, we have tau is equal to P sine theta over the area of A over cosine theta. So therefore, this can be simplified to P over A sine theta cosine theta or using the proper trigonometric property for half angle we have P over 2A sine 2 theta so these are your formulas for the normal and shear stresses acting on the inclined plane. So, let's have an example. So, we have here this problem. So it reads as a rectangular wood panel is formed by gluing together two boards along a 30 degree seam. 
as shown in the figure. Determine the largest axial force P that can be carried safely by the panel in the working stress if the working stress for the wood is 1,120 pounds per square inches and their normal and shear stresses in the glue are 700 psi and 450 psi respectively. So, let's identify the given. So, for the wood, we have the normal stress of 1,120 PSI for the glued section or the inclined section we have the normal stress of 700 PSI and the shear stress of 450 PSI so now, let's determine the largest axial force, P. So, for the solution. So, let's solve first the value of P for the wood. So, we have the normal stress for the wood is P over A. So you have the stress of 1,120 equals P for the wood over area of 1 by 4. So your P is equal to One thousand one hundred twenty times one times four, so you have four thousand four hundred eighty pounds of force. Now, for the glued section. For the normal stress, we have the normal stress equals P over A cosine squared theta. So we have 700 equals P over A is 1 times 4 cosine squared of 30 degrees so therefore your P is equal to 700 times 1 times 4 over cosine 30 degrees so we have P equals 700 times 1 times 4 over cosine 30 Then we have to square. So we have three thousand seven hundred thirty three point thirty three pounds of force. And now for the shear stress, we have P over two A sine two theta. So we have 450 equals P over 2 times 1 times 4 sine of 2 times 30. So we have P equals 450 times 2 times 1 times 4 divided by sine 
of 2 theta is 60 degrees so we have P equals 450 times 2 times 1 times 4 over sine of 60 degrees so we have 4156.92 pounds of force now for the three values of P we choose the smallest value so we choose P equals 3,733.33 pounds as the largest actual force P. So why choose the smallest value? It is because if we choose the other value or the larger value as the maximum value of P when it reach, when it reach the value of 3733 when you apply P greater than this value the system will be subjected to failure or breakage but if we use P, the smallest value of 3733.33 pounds, the system will never reach the failure. So this is why we choose P, the smallest value, as the largest actual force P or the maximum actual force that can be applied.